A construction site was the unlikely setting yesterday for an impromptu visit from the king. A witness from the scene noted that yesterday afternoon he was simply standing at the site when he received a polite tap on his shoulder. The witness turned around to find none other than His Royal Highness the King, offering him an Angus steak burger and an order of onion rings. No words were exchanged, but the King flashed a reassuring smile. Another worker reported that the King attempted to push him off an I-beam, nearly 40 stories in the air. He later admitted that it was just a joke from the King, and that in the end, the two shared a robust laugh. See, this is something I absolutely adore about Sneak King, is that it doesn't take any of its resources for granted. You know, obviously you're developing a downtown level, there have to be people going in and out of the buildings and shops, but just because you have to have them do that doesn't mean it can't serve a gameplay purpose. It can be both. Since you can have the character deliver to anyone while they're doing anything, why not make the character deliver specifically to people doing this specific thing? It's not like I think Sneak King is the champion of resource allocation, but using what it has to the fullest, that's a common theme with Sneak King. Using all of its limit me limited mechanics to the fullest, using the limited scenery to the fullest. So this last guy, we're going to be going to be delivering to him a lot because he constantly walks in and out of that building and there is a hiding place right next to his truck. The, the king is going to get real tired of getting out of this box by the end is what I'm saying. We're going to be delivering to this one man a whole lot. I didn't forget the one-liner, you forgot the one-liner. Hey, alright, delivering eight fries in three minutes actually isn't that bad of a challenge. I mean, it's more than doable if you only go for people as soon as you see them and don't wait for their hunger to get at maximum, but... Eight and three minutes? Sure, that's actually it's actually a reasonably strict time limit. The game did mention it's late. Not only is it late in the game, but it's late over here. I really have a thing in video games for levels at night, in cities specifically. Levels at night outside of the city, not so much, but levels at night inside a city, I love those. I'm sure I've brought that up many times before, and I will many times again but I love it. There's just something about the atmosphere of a video game city at night with all the lights and the people roaming around and the funky music. Well, maybe the funky music doesn't apply in this situation, but I do love how busy the place is. Speaking of the place being busy, just like the second level in the game, much of the challenge in this level comes from not bumping into people while they walk really close to each other. There will be a lot of vision cones and close proximity, and this is much more dangerous in the final mission. This is the final level though, so things getting more difficult here really shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Fifteen out of eight fries delivered. I bet you're glad we always overstock now, aren't you? Oh, 
All right, going to be honest with you, this one's as simple as, hey, find five people to deliver to in two minutes. Getting caught at this point really shouldn't happen unless you need to speed your ass up for something very important. Finding, uh, finding five people to deliver to in two minutes shouldn't be that big a deal. Granted, they can be pretty far spread out, as you've seen so far already. But not two minutes apart spread out. I'm not saying you could definitely make a whole lap or two around the place in two minutes, but you could definitely make a whole lap or two around the place in two minutes. Mission complete. When you think about it, the King's Sprint is actually kind of fast, because it never runs out, and I mean, can you run that fast consistently? Alright, so this one's like the last one, but with different modifiers. Instead of not getting caught, you have to find five people in two minutes and avoid mashing A. I mean, there are two ways it forces you to avoid mashing A. Firstly, you have to get a flourish. Secondly, if you mash A, you'll drop a burger. It's two roads to the same place, really, except you have to take both roads. Usually you only have to take one road, but sometimes you have to drive on both roads and you realize, hey, driving on two roads at the same time is kind of like driving on one road in this analogy. So it's not really a great analogy. And, you know, then maybe you stop and rethink your analogy. I'm not going to, but I'm just saying it might be a good idea if someone did rethink their analogy if it got to that point. Seems like it would be wise. Saw another building pop in back there. As I said, the game doesn't seem to render things that are off camera and sudden camera turns make buildings pop in. I do apologize, by the way, for sounding a bit different this time. I am checking while I'm recording to make sure I'm still audible and what I'm saying can actually be heard and understood. And it can. What I'm saying is still audible and it can be heard and understood. But I'm trying a different recording setup because it is just way too hot the way I was doing it previously. Mission complete. Experimentation is easier if your voice is deep enough to carry some ways. So this mission, uh, it's nothing. You may think, based on the mission's description, that we need to find four separate hiding places and hide there and deliver burgers from there. But no. We can actually reuse the same hiding place over and over. I know this because I checked. Alright, there we go. Mission complete. I'm not sure what the developer had in mind there, but I don't think it panned out. What does pan out is going to go eat at Burger King. That's never a bad decision. Ever.
I really like this one. It's challenging. It teaches you more about the routines people have around the city. Once again, it shows that, you know, Sneaking doesn't take its resources for granted. And it helps make the city feel more alive that there are people that walk around picking up garbage. It would help a little if they did more than pick up garbage in one place. But maybe that one specific place is just full of fucking garbage, like up to the brim in garbage. You know, that makes me think, are there any simulation games where you play as a garbage man? I want to know. I mean, in addition to anyone telling me if they know of any, I'm going to look on Steam after this if I remember. See if there are any garbage simulation games. I mean, there are log logistics simula- Admission complete. Germany makes a lot of simulator games for some reason. Okay, Sneak King, you know you're the last person I would ever want to be rude to because we're good friends, but I don't think you should call any of your challenges action-packed. I really don't think that's a good decision. Because even people who like the game, like me, they probably wouldn't think of the game as action-packed. And anyone making it this far who's still on the fence for some reason would probably think you're insulting them by calling this mission action-packed. Again, not trying to be mean, I just think maybe that wasn't the best way to go about naming this mission. It's action-packed in the sense that, you know, delivering burgers to people is an action. If the, in the strictest sense of the word. But when people think action games, this is not what comes to mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mission complete. I wonder if Logistics Simulator is as action-packed as it looks in the trailer. Delivering five burgers without being spotted is a little easy for this late in the game, I think. Like, that's pretty underwhelming. We've already had other missions where we had to go five deliveries without being seen. I think in previous levels, in addition to this level. But this is a good opportunity to bring up again, yes, I am using a different recording setup. Because the other way I was doing it was much too hot. Much too hot to get any actual recording done. And as a result, I need to know if this method of recording is acceptable. This is the same setup I use while streaming, but I understand if people would prefer my Let's Play commentary to be less like this. The actual commentary isn't changing any, it's just, you know, the microphone is further from my face. So my voice will have a different cadence to it. And it's important to know because even though recording like this is much easier for me, I can't let it come at the cost of the Let's Plays not being as high quality. So if this is perfectly acceptable audio quality, like you can still take my analysis seriously when the audio is this quality, and you don't think the quality is distracting in any way, then I may just keep doing this, because this is a lot easier when it's so hot. This is probably a good game to test it on, too, this specific video for this specific game, because this game is rather quiet. Mission complete. Why doesn't this game have a funky, loud soundtrack like the other Burger King games?
Ah yes, the subway is a method of quick travel. You may figure that someone would get in the subway and go somewhere else besides around the block, but in this particular instance, people who go in the subway just come out on the other side of the block. Maybe subways serve an entirely different purpose in the Burger King universe. Now granted, I'm not like an expert on Burger King lore or anything like that. I've seen the other games, but I haven't played them yet, and seeing a game and playing it are entirely different. Not only because I can't grasp the feeling for Pocket Bike Racer just by watching gameplay, but for all I know, there could be bits of lore hidden in the background that other people haven't seen yet. And I could only see it if I bothered to like play it myself and look for it. You may think it's worth freaking out, by the way, at the fact that there are characters that go in the subway and eventually you'll have to deliver to them during that 20-person rush at the very end for the final mission. And yeah, it scared me a little bit, too. It certainly took a long time to finish the final, final mission. Mission complete. The supermarket may have a lot of things, but a Whopper is not one of them, I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so 10 deliveries and a score of under 2,000 points, that's pretty insane. I mean, we had a mission similar to this the last time around, and I believe I talked about how you had to be good at the game to deconstruct its mechanics like this. That hasn't changed here, certainly, but this one's even more difficult. We want to deliberately keep our chain multiplier down. We want to stay reasonable distance away from people when we deliver to them. We want to make sure we deliver to people as soon as they become hungry. And we also want to make sure we don't put any flourish on it. No flourish whatsoever. So mash that A button. Start mashing that A button for once. So this will be the last mission for this video. Mission 10 out of 20 for the final location. It's been a long time, but, you know, it's finally almost over. And again, I want to stress, I need to know if this audio quality is alright. I know I'm audible, and I know you can clearly understand what I'm saying. I just want to know if this is acceptable. Because I need to choose here. Do I use this setup and record more frequently, like I'd like to, or do I use the original setup? Because people think that one's better. Ultimately, I want to do what I can to get you the best analysis possible and make sure it sounds, you know, not offensive to you. But I'd also like to, to you know, actually output videos at a reasonable pace, and that's kind of hard to do when it's boiling. I don't know who the fuck decided that 2.46 a.m. was the ideal time for it to be so hot. But whoever it is, can you please stop? I'm, I really just want to record Sneak King. <laughs> 